Right, so um, it says find the coordinates and the nature of each of the stationary points of C. Okay, so when we're looking for the stationary points, remember we're looking at the gradient function, dy dx. We're going to set that to equal zero, okay, because at the stationary point, um, the tangent is flat, isn't it? It's the gradient be zero. So if we differentiate this here, bring the three down, so you get uh, three times minus two is minus six, x squared. Bring the two down, so you get 24x minus then 18, yeah? Because uh, the x goes, and the constant goes as well then. So there's your dy by dx. So as I stated a moment ago, for at the stationary points, okay, um, dy dx will equal to zero, yeah? As we've seen before, the tangent will be flat, horizontal, so the gradient will be zero, so gradient function is zero. Now we've got that equal to zero, I need to be able to solve it, right, and we're going to factorise it. Before we do that, okay, we've got to deal with the minus here, because we can't have minus in front of the x squared. So if I divide through by minus one, that will go, but also you'll notice six is a common factor. So if I divide by minus six, Dividing that by minus 6, minus 6 divided by minus 6 is just 1, so I get x squared. Divide that by minus 6, you get minus 4, x, and divide that by minus 6, you get plus 3 equals 0. So we can then have double bracket, two numbers that multiply to give 3 are 3 and 1. Both of them need to be minus to add up to give minus 4. So you can then say, look, x minus 1 is 0 or x minus 3 is 0, so x will equal 1, or x will equal 3. That's where our stationary points will be. Don't forget then, when, when you've got the x values, you've got to work out the y values because they do want the coordinates, yeah? Okay, so um, when x is 1, we can work out y. So you literally got to sub it in there, yeah? When you sub it in, you know, it's the sort of thing you can do in your head, but it might be good just to double check on your calculator as well, right? So you're subbing in 1. So if I do that on my calculator, it comes out to be minus 3, okay? So when x is 1, y comes out to be minus 3. What I'll do then is sub in x to be 3. And I can work out y. So quite simply, you just go back on this replay button, okay, here, and change one to be um, three. And it comes out to oh, have I done wrong here. There's my mistake. So press equals comes out to be five. Okay, so there's my two stationary points there, x is 1, y is minus 3, x is 3, y is 5. You've got to determine the nature, remember it says the nature, so to get the nature we've got to find is it a maximum or minimum. So we do the second derivative, so we'll do d2y by dx squared. Okay, so differentiate this again, so we get minus 12, yeah, when you bring that 2 down, minus 12x. Okay, and then 24x just becomes 24, and the minus 18 disappears so we can see then for each of those stationary points when x is 1 d2y by dx squared will equal to minus 12 times 1 plus 24 which equals to 12 now that's positive so therefore 1 minus 3 okay because that's the the station point isn't it x is 1 y is minus 3 if it's d2y by dx squared is positive we say then is a minimum okay stationary point and then we do the same now when x is 3 d2y by dx squared is minus 12 times 3 plus 24 so that comes out to be um minus 12 that's less than zero therefore 3 5 is a max okay so we've got our stationary point set part b then it says to sketch um this graph okay so we've got here when we sketch this um so you can see our values here okay so we want to have positive x values here so we don't really need much of the negative x axis but we need positive and negative y
three. So um, my minimum is one minus three. So cross to one, down to minus three. That's my minimum there. My maximum then is three, five. So cross to three, up to five, which would be about here, isn't it? So you can see then what my curve is going to look like. Okay, so you're going to join up the minimum to the maximum. There's my maximum, and then it just can shoots off then to negative infinity, and then my minimum shoots off to positive infinity. Okay, so um, it's kind of good to have that extended a bit further. Okay, so don't necessarily put your maximum at the top of your axes. Okay, have the axes increasing a bit more. And the same here with the, ne with the negative values. A um, couple of things really important. They want you to put in the stationary values. So make sure you put X is 3, Y is 5 there. Your minimum there, X is 1, Y, y is minus 3. Um, and we've got the X there, we've got the Y there. So it says then, um, find the range of possible values of K in part C. Okay, so in part C, if we look at it, it says given that the equation, um, given that the equation here, y equals, so essentially this is y, isn't it, equals to k, has three distinct real roots, find the range of possible values of k, okay? So y equals k, if you think about it, is a horizontal line through the y-axis, depending on what k is, k could be any constant, Okay, but it's a horizontal line through the value k on the y-axis. We want three distinct roots. So if you think about where the curve yeah, is equal to k, we'd want three results. So we've got a horizontal line there, horizontal line here. You'd see there you've got three results. Does that make sense? Whereas if you were up here, you'd only have one result. Okay, if you were down here, you'd only have one result where it intersects. So we've got to say that k it's got to be between 5 and minus 3. So it's less than 5 and greater than minus 3 here. So if k is between any of these values there, okay, then you've got three situations where the curve is equal to k. Okay, so you've got three distinct roots there when k is less than 5, greater than minus 3.